Here we go. Hello, zebras. Now, these are the resident zebra. So they hang around between the, the mountains in the background and, and these open plains quite often. Now, if you have a look, go to... Look at them, they're a little bit upset. Now this is, looks like it's a little bit a group of little stallions. So like boys, they liked a bit of rough and tumble. And they were running away. I think they've been chased by a bigger, a bigger, meaner boy to keep, keep him away from the, all the girls. Um, but anyway, very interesting to watch. I uh, hear all the boys say, whoa, I, I, I did the exact same thing when I got my sword for the first time. I was very excited. I've only managed to cut myself once today. I've only had it for about four hours. But um, as uh, Steph says, and Steph is another one of our guides who's actually busy building a camp at the moment, and he got a sword for his son who's about uh, a Maasai sword for his son, and uh, he says, well, every little bit of blood that you get on it, it helps you and your sword become friends. <laughs> Okay, well, I've got some more zebra a bit closer up ahead, so those ones are moving away. So let's see if we can get a little bit closer. But uh, it's very exciting to be honest. If we're heading up towards the river, we might see a giant crocodile. Brooke wants to know why do I have a sword uh, and uh, what do I use it for? Brooke, it's because I'm a little boy at heart. Boys love swords and knives and such things, uh, and in this one in particular, uh, if I have to get stuck in the mud, I use it to chop a tree so I can put the, the branches underneath the wheels so I can get stuck. Um, I use it to, to cut some cheese if I'm hungry. Um, but uh, yes, it's, it's it's just a really nice thing thing to have. Uh, so just because it's so well made and handmade and, and, and from Kenya, it's a very cool thing. Now, as I say, there could be some very big crocodiles down at the river. This is one of the spots where the zebra and the wildebeest swim across the river to try and get between the different patches of grazing. So always a good place there. to come have a look. Oh, sorry, that's my radio making some noise. Oh, that's turning it up. Let's turn it down. There's a warthog. Hello, warthogs. There we go. So there we go. There's a couple of warthogs. Now, you can see they're a little bit nervous, so just keeping an eye on, making sure we're not up to trouble. Now, the pride of lions that I'm looking for that lives in this area, their favorite food is warthog. So it pays to be very cautious if you're a warthog in this area. And, oh dear, where have my binoculars gone? I want to have a look at something far, far away. Mrs. Gordon. Mrs. Gordon is wondering, are wild pigs different from warthogs? Uh, well, just normally, uh, it depends on your definition. We've got quite a few different pig, f oh, 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 what are you doing, car? Uh, quite a few different pig species here in Africa. Uh, this is the only pig that is evolved to handle the savanna biome. So the only one that lives in the grasslands. Uh, the other pigs generally prefer thickets or, th or much thicker areas. So uh, you have bush pig. In Kenya, you've got a very cool one called a giant forest hog. Uh, and then you have red river hogs. And right in Morocco, you have a remnant population of Eurasian boar that uh, live in the Atlas Mountains. But they are different from wild pigs. What a lot of people consider wild pigs are, are generally especially in America, are feral pigs. So the same pigs that are farmed for bacon and pork chops and all those lovely things, um, but have escaped and gone wild. Whether this is a completely separate species, warthogs are their own family. Let's go have a look what's down next to the river. Joey's wondering, are the warthogs aggressive towards people? Well, Joey, no, they're not. So, uh, like any animal, they will become 
become aggressive if they are cornered. Uh, but if you're walking out in the bush, the warthogs will run away from you. They can be very aggressive towards lions and cheetahs and leopards, and they've got very sharp teeth that help them defend themselves. So normally it's only lions and big male leopards that eat warthogs. And here we have some Thompson's gazelle. Now they're becoming one of my favorite animals since I've been in Kenya. They just look so funny and they've got really long tails. Look at it swishing away, such a little animal with a long tail. Oh, it's a unicorn, oh no, it's not a unicorn. It's got two horns, one's just a little bit shorter than the other. I thought I'd find a unicorn for the girls. So there we go, hello. Now, there are lots of flies that bother these animals, so that's why they've got such a long tail, to keep the flies away from the smelly bits. Now, she looks quite pregnant, actually, and uh, they are supposed to give birth sometime in the next couple of weeks. I have seen a few of them, or babies already, but on the other side of the river, and you'll find that there might be a little bit of variation in, in the birthing of the Thompson's gazelles. Oh, it's very still here on the open plain. I can hear a rufous snaped lark <whistles> in the distance. And I can hear the Mara River. Oh, let's get closer to the river. Maybe I can find you a great big hulking crocodile or a big fat hippopotamus. And the wonderful thing about being on your very own live safari is that there could be a lion or a leopard or a cheetah or a hyena around the next corner. And hopefully we'll be able to find them. Welcome back everyone, what a nice little insert from the market.